Today we are somewhere Geelong way, um, pulling a beehive out of the side of this chimney. Um, it's going to be a TV set um, at some point in the future for the series The Rising. Um, and they just want to make the area safe. But when I arrived here, we found not only one beehive on this other side, we noted a second beehive. This second beehive goes most of the way down the wall. It's very big. This one is smaller. Um, still big, but it's smaller. Um, I'll do this one today and then uh, sort out the other one uh, later in the week. I contemplated cutting, um, exposing the hive, pulling them all out, putting them in a box, leaving the box here until I come back later in the week to do the second one. However, when I climbed up the ladder, this hive was um, very, very attacky. So I'm going to use a bee vacuum from the get-go and um, suck them into a separate hive box, frame up their uh, resources and unite them in the quarantine apiary. I just don't want to risk um, people getting stung uh, who are walk working around the property. So we'll do it the cautious way. And so this is the setup. We have some frames ready to put comb into and the hive box we're going to put the hive into. Uh, we've marked where we need to cut the boards just there. So we'll cut up the stud. Um, and we have the BVAC all set, ready to go, generator running uh, to start vacuuming bees from the start. And just these a little bit mean. Anyway, let's get on to it. There we go, it took an hour to expose the hive and what a whopper it is. So about two and a half meters tall. Um, I just put one sheet just at the top here, just so that as I'm working if anything falls it doesn't fall all the way down the bottom <laughs> um, just I don't want to have to make more cuts if I don't have to anyway so that's that um, I still do have the boards on the ground I've just got to uh, scrape them off clean them up and stack them but uh, we'll do that and then we'll come back to the bees they've settled down a little bit they're still a bit stingy but they've settled down 
uh, now that I've bivacked a lot of the guard bees. Okay, we'll start cutting the bottom section of a honeycomb and then we'll work our way up to getting the brood and be back in the bees as we go. Obviously, we've pulled off the bottom of the hive, the honeycomb. Um, it's all fresh, white, waxish stuff built this season. Uh, possibly a lot of wild canola also flying around here, but this is all too fresh to have been from the start of the season, but it's definitely canola honey. Anyway, I'll frame this up and continue. So that little critter is a small hive beetle. Uh, we don't like small hive beetles in our hive, they can cause the honey to go rancid. Unfortunately they're all over the country by now, but um, yeah they're they're an annoying pest, not as bad down in Victoria, but really, really bad once you start to get warmer climates. So you can see this honey is really crystallised, which is awesome for us, it makes the job a heap easier without having sticky runny honey everywhere um, but canola honey is it's a very ultra mild honey, not massively sweet um, some people just don't like that and just use it for cooking honey although some absolutely love it okay, we We've got the two frames of honey. We will need a lot more honey in this hive than um, what we framed up, obviously. We need at least a box and a half of honey. Um, but I'm using two of the boxes to be back from the get-go. And so what I don't frame up into this box, I will just cut to size and frame up at quarantine um, tonight. I'll be here all day, unfortunately, but anyway. Now you can see bees are now focusing on staying on the outside of where the babies are because they need to keep the babies warm. I'm also, I'm also going to not do the long videos now just because I'm on at 27%. I just don't have the technology to do long videos but I think everyone gets the gist. So this is baby bees, um, capped off, and fresh, fresh babies and grubs in there. They go through eggs, grubs, get capped off and hatches bees. This whole section I'm working on at the moment in long sections is all babies. So, so yeah, right. I'll get all the babies out next and then focus on the honey. The bit, as I think I've already said, the bees have calmed down a heap since I've um, been back in a lot of the guard bees. So you'll see that's a frame of all brood and we've got another frame of all brood in there. Um, something unusual to see in a winter hive is boy bees, uh, boy babies. Um, uh, oh well, it's all good. 
of I've also been shaking nurse bees into the box. They'll stay in the box um, and once I close it all up they'll um, look after the babies and keep them nice and warm. Okay, so what's really, really annoying is so there is a gap there between the posts and of course the queen has run in there. So, we, that board was already um, adjoined there so we just took that out and chased the queen and there we go, bottom of the cage, queen clip, there's the queen. Okay, lovely lady there, there we go. So we'll just dangle her down in here. Oh, this is, uh, just like that. There we go. Keep her keep her safe in there. I'll frame up uh, two frames of honey to fill out that box, then put a lid on top as well. Um, and that way the nurse bees that are in there looking after the babies will all be happy. So I've put a feeder lid upside down on there for a second. Well, a second for, until they're at quarantine, so they'll need feeding during winter. Uh, lid on top. There's not enough bees in there to, for them to overheat, even though they're enclosed like that. Uh, obviously there was going to be robbing today, given there's two beehives right next door to each other. But now that I've got eight frames and the queen in there with nurse bees, I'll start cleaning up all this so that we um, reduce all the robbing. And then I'll finish up what's up there. That's heaps of twisty turny honeycomb. It's going to be really hard to get it out, uh, but there's definitely some pieces there I can use and frame up at quarantine. Okay, so that's most of the cavity done. Um, well, all the cavity done. Uh, these will clean it up. Uh, they'll, as it gets colder, they'll start to cluster up. Guess what? There is another hive there. There is a tiny gap that they're able to get in to. So we've got a hive here and another hive down here. Um, that's all on this wall that I can see. Okay, so that first hive is complete. The bees we're seeing are predominantly robber bees. There's not really any non-robber bee activity anymore. So this should be relatively clear um, when I come back on Friday to do the second hive. Um, yeah, with that um, expansion foam there, there's a possibility this fills more than just one cavity like the other one did. So it'll be interesting to see what we have behind this wall. Well, we know the brood area is huge. We know this is a really big hive. I'll have to get here early on Friday to get this one sorted. And we'll go from there. We are at the quarantine apiary. The temperature's gotten quite cold. The bees are really buzzy now because I just smoked them just to push them uh, down into the lower box. So I can now unite them with uh, this box, uh, so without heaps of bees coming up. So let's see if we can set this up in the way.
there we go we've united them um, in a few days we'll have to reduce it down to uh, two boxes but for the time being um, these are now sorted um, and I'll have to set up some more um, spots for the other hives. I hope they feel a nice view for them for the time being.